Aquarius, it's Joe from Angels and Ancestors and Lovelies. This is your January Law of Attraction reading. Um, I'm still doing the monthlies at the moment because of everything that happened in December. And for those of you who don't know, I had um, a loss between Christmas and New Year. And we're still in shock and we're still reading from it. Um, and it's just been, I'm sorry to say, it's been, just been a bit of a shit show really. Um, and yeah, I made the decision, I was shuffling earlier and I was sort of like, oh gosh, I'm not feeling this. And I came off camera and the feeling came over me that maybe I needed to not do the shuffling on um, screen. See how you feel about that. Um, I'm quite happy to go back to it. But for this lot, I am going to do the shuffling off screen so I can just concentrate on the cards it was much better for me i got a much better energy just thinking of your star sign and the cards rather than thinking that the camera was on as well so law of attraction for january 2021 they are going up late lovelies it is the first of january today so i do apologize i'm doing air signs first um usually i do it the other way around i do earth fire water and air i'm switching it i'm doing air water fire and earth um have no idea why that came to me but i'm gonna go with it because the universe likes attention and attention to detail and they like fast movement so i'm kind of like just going with the flow this morning now i'm hoping you see that because i feel it's foggy it's typical english day i have to say it really is and I'm just going to move the tripod slightly so you can see all of the cards. Um, is that better, darlings? Yeah. Okay. So let's get on with your reading. So the law of attraction, as you know, um, or for those of you who don't know more to the point, is a law. It's not just a thought process. It is a law. And we, without even knowing it, we practice it all the times with ourselves. But very often we cancel out what it is that we say and do. And these readings are not for you to follow heart and soul. These are to give you a flavour, an idea of what it's like to do um, the law of attraction on a daily basis. To make it work for yourself. So what we do is we look at an energy card. We look at your manifestation, what's going on around that. You're authoring your storyteller because if you're manifesting, you should be telling your story as well. We will be looking at your cleansing and clearing. That's getting rid of old data that doesn't belong to you. Inspiration and action is what the universe likes. I love you, your gratitude, affirmation and destiny. Now, the reason I do affirmation as well is because you should be talking about yourself positively. I can, I will, I do. That sort of thing. And then these two cards, your energy card and your happiness card are from a different deck. And then this card here is your resistance card. So let's get on with the reading. And I'm going to start with your energy card, your current thoughts and feelings. And as you've got ceremony and invocation, so I'm kind of getting that for some of you there is going to be a magical element to this. You are going to be casting circles, you are going to be making magic. But for those of you that don't come from that quarter, I'm going to say that tradition is going to become very important to you over the next month. Um, you are going to be looking at your roots, you are going to be looking at what's traditionally been celebrated within your family and you will be invoking and um practicing that kind of energy so that is really good that's a lovely place to start especially in a new year your manifestation make a wish or manifest speak or write what you want ask believe and receive and darlings you have the desire to make things happen Aquarius you really have got this oomph at the moment to make it happen when I got your resistance card I got oh whatever 
and I will come to that in a minute but right now I'm getting this first week in January there is this desire and you have recognized it's deep down and you're trying to bring it up into your manifestation beautiful energy to be in now when you're manifesting do not get into the buts if buts and maybes leave them alone it will come up later on in the reading but your manifestation right now ask for what you want ask believe receive and i've forgotten the other bit that i've written so yeah ask believe receive keep those words in your head as you're manifesting now manifestation can be all sorts of different things it can be scribing it can be meditation it can be dream state it can be a dream board anything you like so long as you get your thoughts your feelings your and what it is that you want out there you know if you want a new car what is it like the day it arrives what is it like to sit in it for the first time that's your manifestation um, and if you go and then go, but you've cancelled it, do not get into negatives because you will cancel it out. So darling's moving on to your next card. And the reason I move on quickly is because your manifestation, your storyteller and author cards are very connected. Be your own author. Tell your own story, story as if it's happened. Give it feeling and emotion. So the car's turned up on the drive. You sat your bum in it and now you're going to give that a thought and a feeling how does it feel what what feelings does it invoke in you what's the thought process going through your head because you have the king of air he's a no-nonsense king he don't like bullshit you know this aquarius this is this is air sign you get this um he will cut to the very bone to get to the basics to get down to the deep rooted part of what's going on and when he comes up in your storytelling your author is saying cut out the bullshit when you're storytelling about you tell your story as if it's happened cut out the bullshit don't go into great detail about where the car came from what color it is all of that all of the semantics leave behind just visualize the car itself and then it's all about your feeling, your thoughts. It's not about the car itself. Okay, if you turn it over and it purrs and that gives you a really nice fluttery feeling, that's great. Uh, but what does it feel like going and putting petrol in it for the first time? And for the ladies out there, I'm sorry about cars. I don't know why I get stuck into cars. I have used the analogy of handbags before now because I had a handbag fetish for many years and I felt like I'd lost my right arm when I stopped using a handbag and I have to say when I go into these big department stores and I see these handbags for like gazillion pounds I'm like how do you justify this but some ladies do some ladies absolutely adore handbags it's not just a case of having it they do collect them so I'm going to say to you when you're manifesting think about going and buying that handbag think about um what it's like to walk into that department store knowing that you are going to come out with something amazing um and visualize it how does it make you feel what how do you feel when you start putting your own stamp on that bag your own stuff your your money purse your um photographs your phone all the bits and bobs, lipsticks, how does it feel? How does it feel? Write it down. And the smell of the bag, how does it smell? Like the car, how does a new car smell? You know, is it a new car but second hand and you've got to have it validated or did they do that? Kind of like really get descriptive about your senses rather than descriptive about the thing. It's like if you're manifesting a life partner, it's okay to say tall, dark and handsome or short, fat and blobby or garden gnome or whatever. But it's the energy that you want to draw to you. It's the energy and the essence of the person that you want to draw to you. The person that is going to um, 
support you in your journey of being the best person you can be and vice versa that you help each other in those journeys you're not going to do the journey for each other you're not going to hinder the journey for each other you want somebody who's going to complement that journey so darlings i'm going to jump over your resistance just for a minute and i'm going to go to cleansing and clearing stop self limiting or restricting clean away negative doubt forgive yourself and start saying sorry. And Aquarius, before you start shouting at me, I haven't got anything to be sorry for. Yes, you have. Right there is the, the reason you need to be sorry. You don't have to be sorry to anybody else, but you do need to apologise to yourself. Because if you start with yourself and you start saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me, that's not a message for somebody else. That's a message for you. How did you react to the last time you saw a certain person? How did you react to something on the news? How did that make you feel? Have you dragged yourself down? Are you making yourself feel, I'm not going to say inadequate, but not quite the ticket. Um, if that's the case, then you really need to start with yourself. And you need to start from basics with the one of earth and this is all about sowing that seed and watching it germinate watching it grow right from the very beginning and what i'm getting um is that this is going to be all around your physical life this is going to be about your career your money your family your house all of that sort of stuff that makes you feel safe and secure all of that stuff that is stability in your life. Start from basics. What do you need to apologise to yourself for? So darlings, when you're doing this and you're thinking about stopping the self-limitation, the self-limitation is that somebody has told you you can't, so you've taken that on board and gone, I can't. Yes, you can. Despite what other people say to you, yes, you can. Um, restricting yourself maybe because of a tradition in a family or the family have said oh we're working class you don't need to do this no one's ever been to university in our family before um, forget all of that kind of shit that's other people's crap and we will come um, to the inspiration bit in a minute but this cleaning away of negativity and doubt, very often the negativity and doubt that we have to cleanse, we have to clear, has been drip fed to us by other people for years, for years. And, you know, it starts, our parents have their own doubts about themselves, they pass those on to us. And then we go to school and we get these teachers that are wonderful people in one respect, but in another respect, they can be right Debbie Downers. I remember writing a piece at school and at the time I had an English teacher who really wanted to be a writer really wanted to be a writer um, and that person just slated my piece of writing and years later I found that piece of writing and I was so angry with myself that I'd listened to that and I just then had to sit with myself and I had to apologise to myself that I had taken that on board. But I was so used to hearing people um, be critical of me uh, that I just I took it on board wholeheartedly. And let me tell you, it was only about four years ago that I actually realised people like me. I actually realised that people weren't always there to put me down. I just had to be more selective about who I had around me. Um, so darling, start with you, start growing that little seed, that um, seed that's going to take away the negativity and the doubt, forgive yourself, say that you're sorry. You don't have to say it out loud, the universe doesn't need that. The universe needs to know that you mean it for yourself. Um, and once you start lifting the restrictions, once you start cleaning away that negativity and doubt, you see how quickly this shit comes in for you. Because it comes in, take it from me, it comes in really quick and it works um, massively fast, I have to say, hugely fast. 
So I'm then going to move on to your inspiration and action. And this is believe you can get your dreams, believe in your dreams and believe in you. Now take action. You can do this. Now, the reason that we've got this inspiration is because the universe reacts to us. And if we keep telling the universe that we don't deserve it, the universe is going to react to that. But if we say to the universe, I, I deserve this. I want this. This is what I want out of it. And I deserve this. The universe is going to react to that. And even more so if it's something that you then put into action. If you then say to yourself, right, OK, I've had this inspiration. This is something I want to do. Um, I'm going to do some research about it. Even if you think you can't afford to do what it is you've had the thought about, do some research. Find out if somebody else out there has had a similar idea where you can get together and put your heads together. The universe loves action. It really does. And then it responds by putting the stuff your way that is going to help you get this sorted. You have the one of fire. This is desire. This is drawing energy down from the sun. This is making projects and plans happen this is this deep down desire this um passion and it can be um around another person it can be about you it can be about a car it can be about a mountain it doesn't matter what it is it's a passion and it is saying allow this beautiful spider at the bottom here who's encased in an egg to so stop freaking out um he weaves a web within that egg because he wants you to realise and capture your dreams and let the negativity go. You have a desire to let stuff go and you need to now put that into practice. You really do. Because if you are going to draw um, inspiration from the universe, that thought that just drops into your head, that nine times out of ten you will dismiss it. Don't do that anymore. If something drops into your head and it is an inspirational thought, jot it down. That is quick thinking. Keep a notepad by the bed. Take a little put book out with you. I've got a little pink book that I put in my pocket and I just quickly jot things into it as I'm going along. If you do that, that is quick action and the universe will respond to that, my darling. So allow, this is too ones right at the beginning this is the one of fire and the one of earth and you've got the two together in the same part of the reading you are starting over aquarius with your basics looking at your tradition what it is that makes your tribe tick now it may not fit with you and you may go somewhere else to find something else but right now I'm saying that you are sowing new seeds, my darlings. See, your resistance card, what's blocking your manifestation and wishes. And you have got the two of water, darlings. Now, when I laid this card down, I distinctly heard, oh, it gives a shit. Who okay, okay, cares? Who okay, cares? I think you care. I think you operate really well in a partnership. And for those of you that are in a partnership, I'm kind of getting you allow that to get in the way of what it is that you want. I kind of get that you, you want to see your partner shine. So you, that's where your whole heart goes. You need to bring that back into balance and you need to share this out between the two of you. You really do. Um, the other part of the resistance that I picked up from the Two of Cups, for those of you that are single, you may just be focused on one thing, and that is drawing a life's partner to you. S span that out. Spread that out. It's okay to draw a life's partner towards you, but you can't just be focused on one thing. Life isn't just about one element. Life is about many elements that make up our whole lives. Um, you know, there's our work life, our school life, our um, friends life, our family life, all of that sort of stuff. So there should be other manifestations going on around it, maybe to complement it. But don't just get focused that you want that partnership. 
Because the Two of Cups is not always about that life's partnership. It's sometimes about a business partnership. It's sometimes a partnership between siblings, between parents, um, between cousins, friends, all of that sort of thing. So don't, don't narrow your view. Because if you narrow your view, you're narrowing your choices. So that is your resistance card for the time being, my lovelies. Um, then we're going to go to I love you and your gratitude card. Now these two, I do them in twos because they're all connected. So the I love you. Now a lot of you will know that if you've seen me before, I follow no uh, mantra, which is please forgive me, I'm sorry, I love you, thank you. That is what the spread is based on. Um, but I love you is the most powerful three world words in the world say them often and i really mean that say them often in your head is absolutely fine um and start with you my darling start with you in the morning get up look in the mirror and say i love you um because if you can say it to yourself and mean it and you really learn how to love yourself how to love you how to love how you look how to love the inner you even the negative parts that you think are negative about you if you start loving them you will start seeing them in a completely different light massively different light um so start with you and then start putting it out to other people because if you're saying i love you to you and you, your inner light has started to shine because you've become more positive and you will let me tell you um other people will recognize that energy and they will come towards you because of that um and there's an analogy that i use about cars and busy lives and all of that wouldn't it be wonderful if we were in our cars and somebody cut us up if instead of going off the deep end we could just say i love you go in peace um hope you get home safely can you imagine the energy in your car rather than taking all the shit home and blur to your partner this person did this this person did that instead of that saying to your partner oh god i hope they got home safe you know um, I sent them love and blessings out. Wouldn't that just set up the evening completely differently for you? You have the arbitrator, darling. This is the six of fire. He looks pretty mean, doesn't he? But he's not. He is a gentle soul. He is this person who pushes buttons. He wants people to understand that you can have resolution without conflict. That you can nurture without even knowing his cup is overspilling with love, knowledge, wisdom, joy, happiness, to the point where he is actually feeding that lovely little flower. Now, there's a big debate going on. Is it a dandelion? I like to think so. Other people have said it's a marigold. Up to you which one you choose. But he is sitting there going, hold on. It's okay to be in conflict, but it is better to use resolution through negotiation than it is to get into a sword fight so darlings just have a think about that about the arbitrator the message he brings um and what he does to kind of uh, make un make people understand that it's okay to have deep desires it's okay to have a desire to get your point across it's not okay to have a desire to get your point across and put people down and that's what there is they're trying to say to you whether that is something that you're prone to doing to somebody else or they are prone to doing it to you he is saying to you you know take a look at that that is a part of you that is something you need to look at and you need to start with this i love you to you first and then that will magically overspill and start growing little seeds like these ones over here um growing those seeds so that you are able to move into the power of the law of attraction so darlings we have then got the gratitude card be thankful for everything from the smallest thing to the largest best blessing the attitude of gratitude is a great state to be lovely you have the sage now this is a wise wise person who pulls on 
instinct, wisdom and the flame of um, desire to do a journey, a spiritual journey most of the time. It can be physical, mental, emotional, but a lot of the time it is a spiritual moving on. Now the sage also talks about being um, father time um, and using that element of us to understand that timing is important but it's also an illusion so if we break free from timing um, and we get into the state of gratitude for absolutely everything and i mean everything i mean from seeing a foggy bleak day and i have to say i live in the middle of the country and that actually does that word works so well out here to say that the bleak midwinter because it is bleak out there today there's fog coming down it's dark um and i'm kind of getting from this that maybe you need to clear the fog maybe this sage is saying to you it's time to clear that it's time to get rid of your thoughts around timing and And he wants you to draw on your knowledge, your wisdom, and your passion. Ah, yes. Your passion over there with your inspiration. So, darlings, heed this. The gratitude bit. Be thankful for even the smallest little thing. A snowflake, a raindrop. You know, everybody moans about it raining, but if it didn't rain, we wouldn't have nothing to drink, would we? You know, go figure. Uh, we've lost the ability to speak to the rain people, the rain, the cloud people. Uh, we've lost the ability to connect with the earth wholeheartedly and feel part of that. Um, you know, we come from the earth and we return to the earth. And to not be connected the whole time we're here is such a sorry state of affairs. So, darlings, whatever it is, from the smallest thing, from seeing either your baby smile or a neighbor's dog is barking for some reason go and find out why it's barking instead of moaning about it go out and ask the dog what he's trying to tell you um if there's a noise in the background while you are and i'm going to use this because my fridge just clicked on and it's 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 making it's making this blowy sound it blows cold air my fridge and uh, it just clicked on and I was just thinking about being grateful about something. I am so damn grateful over Christmas that I had a working fridge, I have to tell you. Because we didn't get through all the food that we were going to eat. And it, a lot of it's still in the fridge. And because of a fridge, I'm able to keep it for longer. So, you know, it's, it's the small little things. And I'm really grateful for my computer that I can get this to you as well. So there you go. Just get grateful. Just get grateful about everything. Um, and when you do the gratitude, the I love you and thank you, get used to saying thank you. Thank you to everything and everyone. So if something has worked you didn't expect to work, just say thank you. It doesn't matter if you're not saying thank you to anybody in particular. Be thankful for yourself um, and say thank you to you. I, I'm a right klutz, I am. And if I get something right and I do something really good, I actually remind myself to say thank you and to remind myself that I do love myself, I do matter. So that's the whole point of this bit of the reading. So the last bit of the reading, my darlings, your affirmation talk about you and your life and what you want in positive terms. Stop saying but can't and won't, if buts and maybes. You have the scribe. Now, isn't it funny? I, I love it when the scribe comes out here. But you have the scribe down here. Um, this isn't just about talking about affirmations. He is also saying, keep a history. Write it down. Make sure that you know what your affirmations are doing. And when you write your affirmation down, is it written in positive terms? Or have you used negativity in there? get it written down so you can say what it's like um and when you do your affirmation about you get used to the fact that you are unique 
You are your creator's greatest creation. You are. You are perfection in itself. Doesn't matter what's wrong with your physical body, your spiritual side, your soul, all of that is perfect. It is. You come into this world as a perfect creature. It's what's added to us by other people that make the imperfections. It's other people's perception, other people's way of wanting perfection that makes you imperfect. So darlings, when you do your affirmation, write it down first. Write it down first and make sure that as you're writing it, so that when you say it out loud, you say that affirmation, you put it out into the universe, that it really does sound positive um, because then you will get positive back. So darlings, your destiny, blessings to look forward to. I love this card. This is the Nine of Earth, very similar to the Nine of Pentacles. It is a wish fulfillment of abundance. Um, abundance is um, a great place to be, but abundance doesn't have to be um, on the physical realm it could be mental emotional and spiritual and let me tell you when you've got a, an abundance of things that on the mental and emotional level things start to happen for you in a massive big way so darlings see the little cup that she's got and the butterfly around her neck she has got so much positivity going on for her she's offering this cup out to other people so that they may feel the abundance as well so that is the blessing that you have got to look forward to and then darlings your happiness what makes you feel good and you have cave and sanctuary now your sanctuary can be your home your bedroom whatever i have a sanctuary that i go to that i can go to doesn't matter where i can physically go there i can mentally go there and it isn't my home i mean my home, home is my sanctuary i suppose but this particular place is an ancient heathland that i'm very privileged to have walked it for 17 years um and i have to say the thought that that Heathland has been there for thousands of years um, and is probably very similar to how our ancestors walked it as well um, takes you to a whole different realm. So this isn't just about your home, this is about your sanctuary that you may go to in a meditation, a dream state. Um, it's whatever makes you feel good, darlings. A beach doesn't matter where it is um but just be aware and i'm getting loads and loads of messages i'm really sorry um just be a bit be aware about what makes you feel good because if you feel good to start with when you start doing all of these practices then they will come much easier they really will aquarius that is your law of attraction reading for 2021 happy new year darlings and i will catch you in the next reading bye for now